from their headquarters deep in the Segmentum Solar on Holy Terra sits the seat of power for the Ecclesiarchy, the state church which maintains power and promotes the worship of the Emperor of Mankind as the one true God of humanity. Since the decree passed it laid down during the Age of Apostasy in the 36th millennium, the Ecclesiarchy were commanded that they could not contain any men under arms. The Adeptus Sororitas, colloquially known as the Sisters of Battle, are the all-female military arm of the Ecclesiarchy, mercilessly rooting out spiritual corruption, heresy, and xenoscum within humanity and every organization of the Adeptus Terra. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be doing a painting video for a Sisters of Battle Canoness of the Order of Our Martyred Lady. This is a fairly simple scheme using the colors of black, red, and quite a few metallics. And the goal of this video is not to be a masterclass, but just a basic starter video to help you get your army onto the tabletop quickly. So with that said, let's get into the video. All right, welcome to our tutorial. So our very first step is going to be to undercoat the model in Chaos Black Spray or any of your favorite normal undercoat sprays. Um, another thing I also did is I kept the backpack separate and this will just help with painting of the robe. Obviously, if you want to skip it, uh, you can glue it on, but I just find it's a little bit easier to keep it separate. All right, so for our very first step, we're going to be doing a very thin undercoat of Incubi Darkness. You can see here that I've got it in my airbrush. And Incubi Darkness is a really nice color because it is a blue shade. Uh, it'll actually work as both a undercoat for our red, which is gonna be our robes, and for our black. And you guys are gonna see how that technique works in a little bit. So for this step, I'm doing quite a few thin coats. You'll notice that I'm moving the airbrush back and forth across the model, rotating the model as I go, making sure to not go too heavy, and basically doing this two or three times until the model is fully coated, getting it from all angles. Make sure you do a really thorough job here. You want a nice solid base coat of Inky by Darkness. All right, so now for our first base coat color, we're gonna be using Red Oxide from Chimera Colors. This is actually a very, very high pigment red made by Scale 75. I would highly recommend picking up a set of these paints. Uh, they're fairly cheap, you get fairly large bottle size, and they just have absolutely excellent coverage. So you can see here, over a coat of Inky by Darkness, there's actually incredibly well good coverage. Um, I'm just using a very nice thin down coat. This is probably around 20% water in there, so keeping it nice and thin, working in really quick fast strokes, top to the bottom, and get at that full coverage. All right, so in this next step, I'm just going back and correcting some of the overspill uh, of my red onto my Ink by Darkness uh, with some just straight Ink by Darkness. So just make sure to do this step. It's a little bit of a correction step, but it'll be worth it down the road and just kind of cleans up any of the spill spillage. Uh, I'm only human too, so sometimes this happens. All right, and so for our next step, we're gonna be base coating all of the metal with Thrash Metal from Scale 75. I'm using a fairly thin sized brush. This is a number one brush from Rosemary & Co. And for this, I wanna make sure that my metallic is nice and thin, adding a little bit of water. Just being careful, I wanna go over all the beads, the trim of the armor, and especially being careful when I'm doing the rivets. So for this, just use your, take your time and it might take you a little bit longer. If you need to, you might make some mistakes, but again, no worries. You can just go back over this with that original Inky by Darkness, and it is just a step that takes a little bit of time. Uh, if you're not sure exactly what to paint silver, just you know paint as much as you want, and then at the very end, just repaint anything that you didn't get quite right. All right, so this is the first of two wash steps. So what we're gonna be doing is taking our transparent black from Pro Acryl, and this is just a very, very strong black wash. So we're gonna actually water it down with about 50% water, and we're gonna very carefully cover all of the areas that we painted silver, and give that lots of time to dry. We wanna get this into all the cracks, all the crevasses, anywhere where the two surfaces touch together. So just make sure you're working again really carefully, getting good coverage and not missing any spots. All 
All right, with our wash all dry, it is time to base coat all our gold areas. So same kind of deal as with our metal color, we're gonna use a little bit of thinned down Peridot Alchemy from scale 75. And we're gonna very carefully go over all of the gold areas. So same thing with before, we wanna make sure to get right up to the edges using a nice thin brush, just lots of brush control, keep your metallics wet, keep your brush moving. You wanna make sure you are not overdoing it here. Uh, metallics can dry quite clumpy. So just take your time and work around the model, make sure you're moving the model. And again, if you do make a few mistakes here, not a big deal, there's gonna be time to go fix it later. So just focus on brush control and doing this nice and steady. All right, so with our gold all base coated and dry, we're gonna be doing our second wash step. And for this, I have a bit of a mix. So it's 40% Druchy Violet, 40% Drakenhoff Nightshade, and 20% Transparent Black. So this is gonna give us a kind of dark purple bluish wash. And then the black is gonna kind of darken it so that it's gonna be used to shade all our gold areas. We're also gonna use this to shade our red. So this is the nice thing about this technique. By creating basically a master wash that can be used on multiple different surfaces, we can kind of be quite quickly and messy in this step. You'll notice that I'm just kind of willy-nilly covering all of the areas. I'm making sure that I'm using quick brush strokes so that the paint doesn't dry in any one spot. And you're gonna work around the model with this wash. Now make sure to save some of this wash for later because we're definitely gonna use it in a later step. All right, so at this point, you'll notice that quite a bit of the paint is pooling into the cracks. Don't worry about it too much. We're actually gonna go back after we've done this step and clean up all of this pooling. So for now, just make sure you're getting the paint in on the rivets, all over the gold, deep down into the dark recesses. And you'll notice here, I'm actually going and I'm actually soaking up a little bit of that uh, wash so that it's not just sitting in any of those recesses. So just use your brush, continuously move it. You'll notice that I wipe a little bit off on a paper towel and then just moving it around the model, making sure it's everywhere. So we really wanna make sure that on the cloth areas especially, that we don't get any pooling for this color. So just try to be careful and keep an eye out for those larger pools. All right, so with our washes dry, we're gonna go back and do a little highlight on all the black armor areas. And for this, we're using a 90% wash of Incubi Darkness with 10% Pale Pink from Pro Acryl. So again, just using a very thin brush, make sure to be really careful, grab those highlights, grab the tops of all the armor plates, the tops of all the fingers, anywhere where the light is gonna naturally hit. And again, just use this step slowly. It takes a little bit of practice and a little bit of brush control, but it's an important step to help keep that armor nice and bright. Hey guys, just wanna interrupt the video for a minute to talk about paint colors. So obviously in this video, I'm using certain paint colors. Now these are ones that I have in my personal collection. You can use different brands of the same colors, or if you're doing another order, you can apply all these techniques using those different colors as well for the specific order. So whether it's blue, white, uh, orange, anything like that. So, or you can just make up your own color. So I just highly recommend uh, really focus on the techniques. And you know, obviously if you wanna pick up these colors, I do use quite a few different brands, but you can use Citadel, Scale 75, uh, Army Painter, these are all great brands. So don't be, don't be intimidated by the number of brands and, and types of paints that I use. Uh, really it's about the technique and how you apply the paint. Let's get back to the video. All right, so our washes are all dry and it's time to move on to our first highlight on our red. So for this, we're gonna be using a 40% mix of Incubi Darkness and Red Oxide. And we're gonna be use, painting this into all of the little cracks and crevasses around all the rivets. And basically this is gonna be our first shade color. So the Incubi Darkness actually turns the red into a bit of a purple color. And we're gonna be using kind of a thin version of this, painting it underneath all the cloths into all the very deepest crevasses. So just be really careful with this. We wanna kind of, paint this into the darkest areas. All right, so with our main shading color done, we're gonna go for our first highlight. This is gonna be a 50-50 mix of the red and red oxide from Chimera. 
you'll see immediately how much brighter this gets. So this is going to be basically our first highlight color uh, back over our base coat and making sure that we're leaving a little bit of that red oxide base coat plus some of the shading as well. And just going along the tops of the cloths down towards the bottom, everywhere where we think the light's going to hit, leaving a little bit of that darker color in the crevasse and in the recesses as well. So just to take your time, um, if you're having trouble kind of figuring out where to put these highlights, just kind of hold the model up to a light bulb and see kind of where the natural light falls and usually that'll give you a pretty good indication. All right, so now for our next highlight of red. For in this case, we're gonna be using 75% of the red and 25% of red oxide. So you'll see immediately how much brighter this color has gotten. Again, we're gonna be kind of repeating that same process, but leaving some of our previous colors showing. And again, we wanna use thin paint here. This is gonna ensure that our cloth is nice and smooth. So add a little bit of water to your paint. Uh, not too much water, we don't want it to pool. Um, but we definitely want it to be thin enough that it doesn't leave any sort of brush strokes. So just working around the model nice and carefully and you can see here I'm just being very very careful just to hit all the edges and the tips of the cloth. All right, and now we're doing our final highlight of red, and for this one, it's gonna be just kind of 100% pure of the red by Chimera, and you'll see here how much that last little bit of red just helps the color pop. So again, you'll see that I'm just doing even less of the previous areas, leaving all, most of the previous color, and just basically hitting the very tips, tops of the fabric, very kind of edges, and this is gonna just really, really help that color pop. I wouldn't go much past this, um, just because it will add, turn pink if you start to kind of brighten this up. So I like to kind of end with this color. It's a nice, super rich red. All right, so now we're gonna start highlighting some of our black armor. And for this, we're using a 90% mix of Inky by Darkness with 10% pale pink. So I'm just gonna be getting the tops of the uh, breast area and the armor plates there, uh, tops of the front of the armor. We're gonna get the tops of all the gloves, the very tops of her kind of gorget, the neck piece, and basically the areas of the black armor that are gonna be touching the light the most. So this will be kind of our final highlight. Just make sure to be careful here using a very thin brush. You can see here that I'm getting the just very tips and tops of the fingers, making sure I'm leaving some of that darker color in between, and basically all the areas that the light is not gonna get. Now we're going to be working on highlighting all our metal and for this it's just going to be super simple going back with our thrash metal just hitting the tops of all those metal areas uh, we're going to be basically re-hitting any of the rivets that we need to in case we need to and then highlighting any of the flatter larger metal areas uh, we don't need to go too crazy on this highlight so just be very kind of selective you can see here i'm just kind of hitting the tops of the plates on the leg which is primarily metal but other than that i'm not going too crazy i do want the metal to stay nice and dark Same thing on the gold. So again, going back to our Peridot Alchemy, we're gonna be highlighting all of the gold areas. And for this technique, basically what I do is it's not quite a dry brush, 
but basically I'm wiping a little bit of the paint off my brush and just very gently kind of pulling my brush across the metal areas. So a dry brush uses a lot less paint. This is almost a wet brush, but because of the way that I'm holding my brush and just the amount of paint and the way that I pull it, it basically is like a very heavy kind of wet dry brush. And this is still gonna kind of have that same effect of leaving the paint and dark areas in the uh, recesses but it's not going to be kind of have that chalky look of a traditional dry brush and I'm still going to go in, in certain areas where there is a little bit more of a flat surface just paint that by hand. So now I'm gonna begin by basically highlighting that gold area. So this is an 80% mix of Peridot Alchemy with 20% heavy metal. And this is just gonna be on the very tips of the edges of the gold filigree here and the trim. I'm just getting the very tops of all the edges, tops of the weapon, anywhere where the gold basically has hard edges. Uh, again, this is just a very subtle highlight. I'm not going too bright here, but that's just gonna help add a little bit more interest to the gold. So just kind of, you know, use your imagination here, have fun with it, don't, don't get too serious and, you know, just put it where you think it looks best. So now we're going to begin the flesh areas and this model has very little flesh so two thin coats of tan flesh just on the face and making sure to give ample time to dry in between layers. We want to make sure we're using a very small brush for this to make sure we don't get any oversplash. So just take your time and make sure the layers get nice and dry in between. Now we're going to go back to our wash that we created in one of the earlier steps to, for our gold and we're going to actually use this to wash our flesh as well. This is the great thing about a technique like this is we can kind of reuse some of our colors. We don't have to kind of bring in new paints. So I actually had some of this wash left over on my wet palette and I just went back and used some more of it. You can see here that um, that wash is now dry. And once it's dry we're going to go in with our base color tan flesh and again just very carefully we're going to be highlighting the tops of the nose tops of the cheeks, tops of the top lip, and just the chin area. This is gonna be the very uh, first highlight, and we wanna make sure to leave a little bit of that dark shade in the recesses once it's dry. So for our next highlight, we're gonna be doing a 50-50 mix of tan flesh and pale pink, and this is just gonna be the very, very tops of the nose, top of the highest lip, top of the cheeks, so just the very, very tops of all the areas, and just doing, again, a very, very light highlight. Um, this is such a small model and so little flesh that you, know, you don't have to be perfect here, you can be a little bit sloppy. Alright, so everyone's dreaded enemy eyes. So for this, I'm going to basically paint the eye sockets in Corvus Black. And then I'm going to go in with a little bit of titanium white with the smallest brush I possibly have, using as much care as I possibly have. And make sure your paint's not too thin here, otherwise it will kind of pull into the eyes. And you're basically going to just place two black dots, sorry, two white dots on either side. Um, and then obviously if you do make any mistakes, you can go back with your Corvus Black and fix them. Uh, although this doesn't look that great on video, I did actually have to go back and make a few mis few corrections on this. Uh, the eyes weren't perfect, it took me about uh, one or two attempts to get them right, but just take your time and hopefully you can um, get good at them. After that, we're gonna move on to the sword. Now for this, I wanted a much brighter metal. So I went with heavy metal from scale 75. And again, using this color with a little bit of water, we're gonna do two thin coats onto that sword, making sure there's ample time to dry in between coats. All right, with the heavy metal dry, we're gonna take a little bit of Pteridon Turquoise. This is actually a contrast paint, and we're basically gonna thin it down just a little bit and paint it into that middle kind of run. That's gonna just be our power sword effect. Uh, obviously, you can paint the whole sword blue if you want like more of a glowy blue effect, but I like to just keep it nice and subtle. So just doing two kind of thin coats of that Pteridon Turquoise through that middle section of the sword. And then afterwards, I would just go back and hit that little power nub with a little bit of your silver just to pick it back out. All right, so this is basically our last step and obviously I'm basing this as per this model. So for that, I'm doing a first layer of recarved flesh. Then once that's dry, I'm gonna basically wash the whole base with some um, Athonian camo shade. Uh, and then once that's dry, I'm gonna go back over it with my recarved flesh. 
do a small highlight of deep kin flesh on the edges and then paint the rim in black paint. Once that's done, I'm gonna apply my static grass and my base is done. Now obviously, depending on your specific theme, uh, you'll wanna paint your bases however your army is gonna be. So this is really a kind of added step. It's obviously not necessary to do it exactly like I did. And for me, I actually used some cool resin bases that I had sitting around um, to kind of give them a cathedral feel, like she's inside a cathedral. She's ready to, you know, smite the enemies of the Empire. So. Hey everyone, hope you guys enjoyed that video. Uh, if you did, please make sure to leave a comment below, hit that thumbs up and or subscribe to the channel. I'm gonna be doing a how to paint Death Guard video coming up, so make sure to stay tuned for that. And as always, lots of other content on my channel, including podcasts, interviews, and other hobby content. So thanks so much for watching, have a nice day.